and reminds me of a story that goes back to the early 1990s. In New Orleans, Louisiana, there was a star high school football player by the name of Marshall Falk. You football fans, anyone hear that name? Okay, yeah, football fans are like, oh, yeah, of course I know who Marshall Falk is. He was a great, great player. But back in the early 90s, he was just a great high school player. And all of these big-time colleges and universities all over America were just falling all over themselves to try and get this young man to come play for them. Well, one of the coaches who was recruiting Marshall was an assistant football coach at the University of Nebraska by the name of Jack Pierce. Jack's actually a friend of mine. He and I got to know each other really well as I was writing this book. And Jack was recruiting Marshall Falk, and he was doing the things that a good recruiter does, building relationships, determining what it was that Marshall Falk truly valued. And he did. I mean, he knew everything about Marshall, or so he thought. Well, eventually it was time for Jack Pierce to bring his boss to New Orleans, the head coach of the University of Nebraska, who at that time was Tom Osborne. And Coach Osborne was only allowed by NCAA rules at that time one in-person visit as the head coach. The assistant coach got to go every week. So the assistant coach knew the lay of the land. Well, okay, well, Jack Pierce takes his boss, Tom Osborne, to New Orleans. They meet in Marshall Falk's family home. The mom, the grandma, and the English teacher are there. Apparently, he was close to the English teacher. And when I was in high school, I steadfastly avoided my teachers, not Marshall. And so the meeting went very, very well. So well that at the end of the meeting, the two coaches, Pierce and Osborne, were walking out to the rental car, and they both said, wow, this is great. We have him. We have him. This is, this is a done deal. In fact, uh, Marshall even said, he goes, I'm, I'm probably coming. I'm probably coming. Well, we fast forward about one week, and we get to the first Wednesday in February. That's called National Signing Day. And that's the day when these young men, these high school star players, kind of bind themselves. They sign their name on the dotted line, and that says where they will go to school. And on that day, Coach Osborne and Coach Pierce did not get Marshall Falk. He didn't go there. Instead, he went to San Diego State University. San Diego State, great weather, but not really a place where a star player would probably go football, or one, one would, would, would think. And so, so Osborne and Pierce were very disappointed, but they were also just kind of confused. Like, wow, we thought we had this one in the bag. And the problem was, after they did this post-mortem, they determined what went wrong. It turned out Marshall Falk wanted to play the position of running back. He wanted to be a running back. Now, you football fans out there are saying, well, yeah, of course, because he went on to the NFL and became one of the greatest running backs in the history of that sport. But in those days, all of the big-time schools from the Big Ten and the Big Eight and the SEC, they were all recruiting him as a defensive back. And Coach Osborne said, Jeff, I'm convinced we could have had Marshall Falk had we only asked one simple question. Marshall, what side of the ball do you want to play on? What side of the ball do you want to play on? He goes, we knew everything about Marshall Falk. We could have told you his girlfriend's life story. We knew Marshall's favorite flavor of ice cream. But because there was this one question we assumed, we didn't ask him what side of the ball we want to play on. I know we would have had him if we had only said that. And we would have taken him in a heartbeat as a running back because obviously he was that good.